I think that it's always a great idea to use your pediatrician as your first resource. First of all, just to make sure that everything medically is okay. Your pediatrician is also a good first step for just gathering some initial information. And what that might look like would just be some screening forms, you know, checklists that you are completing as a parent and that you're giving to teachers to complete too. And one of the diagnostic criteria of ADHD as well is that it needs to be occurring over more than one environment. So if your child is only showing symptoms of ADHD in the school setting and you see them at home and even during homework time, you're not seeing any issue at all. Maybe there's something else going on in the school environment that's keeping them from being successful or vice versa. And then as sort of a parallel process, I would be um, contacting your school team too, your school psychologist. According to law, if you bring up concerns, it's something that your school, um, at least public schools, have to respond to. They have to pay attention to it. And so what that might look like is that you're asking teachers to start filling out like behavior monitoring forms, right? Just sort of tracking behaviors across different aspects of the school day and seeing what's coming up. Or you can actually go through the process of asking your school for an evaluation. And if they find that there's also uh, um, a difficulty with uh, the child meeting academic demands, then they'll go through their evaluation process too. If it does feel like, you know, things are coming up based on what the pediatrician's seen, things are coming up based on what the school's seen, you know, I, I am biased, of course, because of what I do, but I always think that a good thorough neuropsych evaluation can be really helpful, not only in terms of making that diagnostic decision, right, yes or no, but also in terms of really getting a comprehensive picture of your child's strengths and weaknesses as a thinker and a problem solver, making sure that there aren't any other weaknesses like, you know, language comprehension or anxiety that are also getting in the way and things to be paying attention to. You can ask your school to be doing things while you're going through that process. All public schools are required to do is to move through what's called tiered interventions, regardless of whether or not they've been identified yet as actually needing formalized special education supports. You are asking the teacher to help them out with breaking down writing assignments a little bit more at the end of the school day to give them a better idea of where to start, right? Or um, some of those informal things might be that your student's desk is always front and center in the classroom. Those kind of subtle environmental changes that can be made in order to help a kid um, uh, maintain better behavior in the classroom. Kind of the lower level of supports is what's called a Section 504 plan. It's about um, making accommodations or modifications to the environment in order to allow a child to safely access the general education curriculum. So they're not in need of any special education services per se, right? They're not falling below grade level necessarily in academics, but there's different types of modifications that need to be made to their classroom setting in order to help get their best. It's like redirection. It could also be things like nonverbal cues for attention, right? So maybe there's some sort of system established where the teacher can, without calling the student's name out, sort of like tap on their desk or something that's like an established cue of, hey, I see you're drifting off come back and join us, then uh, provides consistency across settings for what teachers must be doing for a student. The sort of next level of um, intervention is what's called an individualized education program or an IEP. And an IEP is for when a student, um, when their symptoms are so impactful that it is causing them to drop below grade level and they are in need of specific interventions or strategies with goals and separate minutes set aside during the course of their school day in order to work on and learn those strategies. It can be 
time with either a resource teacher or the school social worker where they are say they have a goal to better self-regulate in the classroom. So they're working on the, you know, active listening skills. And then finally, I think in order to really kind of hit the ground running and um, uh, get some help right away, I think one of the fastest actions to that is to um, uh, elicit the services of a um, psychotherapist. So namely, somebody who practices cognitive behavioral therapy and has experience working with kids and their families with ADHD.